Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Chad Sports Talk. You said, no, my name's Chad. Take a dive in sports. And welcome to the, the, the culmination of my NFL uh, Top 50 position-wise uh, video uh, series. Now we're going to generate four teams. Yeah, I finally narrowed it down. I've been saying quite a few times. I didn't know how I was going to do this, but I finally narrowed it down to four teams. 50 members each with three coaches attached to them. Um... There's some hard decisions to get in here, and there's also a few uh, party surprises. A few guys I didn't put in my top 50. They were like in the cutting room floor that I've added to these teams. Um, it's just kind of weird to kind of see how you want to to finagle some of these positions and make these uh, uh, work. Um, you notice the the, uh, the pictures of the players. Some of them are a little bit different. Some of them are more like a headshot compared to you know an action photo. Uh, these are more recent individuals. So, before I dive into all of that, if you could just go ahead and smash that thumbs up for me, especially like the content I provide you really pleases you two guys and help promote this channel out. You can also subscribe. A lot of you guys are viewing my work. I love you all for doing that. Now, many of you subscribe. It's cost you a dime. It helps me provide more entertainment value for you. So, I kind of do this a little bit differently than I normally do. Normally, I give you a little slideshow. I don't say a word and just kind of let the slides and the stats kind of speak for themselves. Um, I'm just going to show up the pictures. I'm going to say, hey, here's, here's the guys. Here's some of the reasons why. And we'll start off with the first team. And the first team, I'll just in there right now, pretty much has all the leaders of all the stats. Um, uh, before, you know, actually, let me back this one up. Uh, between the four teams, I've actually had third, uh, average 38 Hall of Famers. Um, it's like 42, 41, 34, 35, I think, how, how the Hall of Famers go, not counting the coaches. And I try to sprinkle in a little bit of the current players in there, uh, and some other guys are still in transition, just retired, and not eligible yet for the Hall, or hasn't been selected to the Hall. So there's a good uh, smattering of teams in here. I think every team in here has been... Uh, uh, Documented, that, that, and there's a few exceptions, I believe. I think Jacksonville doesn't have anyone. But uh, let's just go ahead and just dive into this one. This is the uh, first team, the quarterbacks and running backs. As you see, the uh, top three quarterbacks here are, are in no particular order. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning. All three of these gentlemen are the number three, or the top three in passing yards and patchy touchdowns. Uh, Tom Brady has the seven rings on his fingers. I mean, his hands are really heavy. <laughs> Drew Brees and Peyton also have three Super Bowls between them as well. And this is a very uh, unique and, and, and spectacular group of individuals right here. Now, the backfield consists of Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, and Jim Brown. Four prolific runners. Emmett Smith is the leading rusher of all time. Jim Brown was a bruiser in his day. Walter Payton, sweetness, had had the moves to, to uh, uh, and it was actually the, the cornerstone of what everyone was, uh, was going for. Barry Sanders was elusive, uh, hard to contain. Uh, part of he didn't have more stats to continue playing, but uh, issues with the Detroit organization kind of went different ways. For receivers and tight ends, um, probably like no surprise with some of these guys. The receivers, Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, Larry Fitzgerald, Don Hudson, Steve Largent, and the tight ends of Jason Witten, uh, Tony Gonzalez, and Rob Gronkowski. And no, no, no surprise there. Jerry Rice is the, the GOAT of the receiving core. He's their number one receiver. Everyone looks up to him. Uh, Randy Moss is another prolific uh, uh, individual to just can make catches. Uh, Larry Fitzgerald was just a cornerstone of that Arizona Cardinals. Um, only made it to one Super Bowl, fortunately, never won it. But he was just a, a phenomenal talent coming out of pit. Uh, Don Hudson was the, pretty much the, the the father of the modern-day receiver um, out of Green Bay when it, the end really became a position, and he just lit up uh, uh, and, and helped explode the Green Bay's dominance during his time frame. Steve Largent might be a little surprised on this list, but he's like Mr. Consistent, um, especially in a really bad Seattle team. Many, many bad Seattle teams, but he was Mr. Consistent with, with the with the Seahawks and always made the catches when he had to. Uh, with the tight ends, uh, Tony Gonzalez is the best tight end ever. Uh, Gronkowski, uh, 
uh, with him and Brady hooking up, they had that's the best duo of a quarterback and receiver, having the most touchdowns ever between them uh, combined. And Witten was just another guy that just you know was a key asset times being the you know, key receiver, especially for Romo. And then Dak Prescott retired and said he got the edge again and came back with, with the Raiders before just hanging him up again. But, you know, he's one of these guys that actually has a lot of stats. He's one of the best tight ends as well. The O-line. Now, these guys are just, you know, the big man up front and is going to protect you. And a lot of these guys I don't think no one's going to really uh, complain too much about them. You know, if, uh, Joe Thomas, Bruce Matthews, Larry Allen, Mike Webster, Anthony Munez, Randall McDaniel, Will Shields, and Jim Otto. Bruce Matthews is actually one of those guys who can plug and play anywhere in the offensive line. Um, you know, just a, a phenomenal force. Larry Allen was a key reason why Evan Smith had a lot of rushing yards. Uh, Joe Thomas was a, a cornerstone that Cleveland Browns offensive line. And once they went, offensive line went. Uh, Anthony Munez. Also another great defensive lineman. So a lot of these guys are, are, are very uh, good at their job. Now for the defensive lineman, um, this is this is going to be just a a formidable defensive line, and good luck trying to defend against these guys. We have Bruce Smith, Reggie White, the Minister of Defense, Gino Marchetti, uh, Deacon Jones, Andy. Ripsatelli, uh, Merlin Olson, Mean Joe Green, Aaron Donald, and Bob Lilly. Good grief. These guys are just a, a beast up there, uh, especially with Olson and Jones, just part of that fearsome foursome of the Rams during their as tenure. Mean Joe and Green was the same anchor point of that uh, steel curtain. Aaron Donald, you already know, he's a, he's a beast out there in L.A. right now. So the, the, these are just so, some phenomenal... <laughs> Phenomenal players. Linebacking core. We'll, uh, we'll have Ray Lewis, Junior Seau, Dit Butkus, Lawrence Taylor, Jack Lambert, Bobby Wagner, and Chuck uh, Bednarak. Now, Bednarak is just one of these guys I, I had, you know, did a little research on. He had a uh, well, oh, hellacious hit on uh, Frank Gifford pretty much in his career. You know, Lawrence Taylor in Joe Theismann career. Uh, Make sure his big toe was tickling his ear. That was a nasty, nasty hit, and he felt bad doing that one. Uh, Jack Lambert, the toothless wonder. Bobby Wagner, he, he was the leader of that Legion of Boom up there in, the, in Seattle. Um, Junior Seau, very great linebacker, never really uh, uh, landed on a, a championship team. Uh, Ray Lewis. Been there. Dick Buckus, another great linebacker, never made to a championship. Secondary. Um, yeah, good luck in the arrow attack against these guys. Um, you have Mel Blount, Champ Bailey, Deion Sanders, Night Train Lane, Daryl Green, Emlyn Tunnel, Ronnie Lott, and Ed Reed. Yeah, good luck with this one. Oh. <laughs> Daryl Green's been uh, personified as probably one of the best uh, cornerbacks ever uh, running a lot. Um, yeah, if he hit you, 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 your kids will feel it. Um, and, you know, Chan Bailey was another one. Mel Blount, Night Train Lane was one of the uh, key highlights of Detroit Lions. Then your special teams and kickers, uh, led by, uh, again, uh, Sternrud as your kicker, Ray Guy as your punter. Return specialist is Devin Hester. I think it might be no surprise in that one. I think he's probably the best returner ever that I've ever graced a field of, of, uh, for the NFL. It's a shame he hasn't quite gotten the hall yet, but we'll see um, if he actually lands in there. And your coaching staff will be led by head coach Don Shula, with his assistants being Bill Belichick and George Hallis. Now, with uh, these three coaches, these are the top three guys in wins. And these are three winningest coaches in the NFL history. Bill Belichick is actually known for his defensive mindset. Uh, George Hallis is great. Some great teams. He's never quite uh, got over the hump a lot of times. And many times he uh, actually tenured as the head coach of the Bears. <clears throat> well, there's team one so far. And probably not too many surprises. So let's go off to team two. And 
your quarterbacks for Team 2 is Dan Marino, Brett Favre, and Aaron Rodgers. That's right, Aaron Rodgers playing back up to Brett Favre again. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to love this video if he ever watches it. <laughs> but Dan Marino was, was the, the, the premier passer when he came out, and he set all the marks. Everyone since then was uh, trying to beat, match his marks and beat him. Uh, Brett Favre was another one of those guys that did that. Uh, uh, and he was a, a great passer himself, come out of Southern Miss. Aaron Rodgers, learning under Brett Favre, has now become the you know the the, the master up there in Green Bay. Uh, uh, you know, after Bart Starr, Brett Favre, that's Aaron Rodgers. You know, and so it's a great line of quarterbacks up there in Green Bay. And unfortunately, both Aaron and Brett only had one Super Bowl championship, and Dan never lifted the trophy. Um, which is kind of a, a sad for his part. In the backfield, uh, this one's a little bit more older guys in here. So you got Steve Van Buren, uh, Marion Motley, O.J. Simpson, and Adrian Peterson. Peterson's just another one of those those uh, uh, really uh, elusive guys in the backfield. Some about the state of Oklahoma uh, generate these type of, uh, of running backs. It's just weird. O.J. Simpson was a bruiser right there with the Bills. And the, looking over to the uh, receivers and tight ends, um, here we have uh, Elroy Hirsch, Crazy Lace Hirsch, Tara Owens, Fred Bolitnikoff, uh, Julio Jones, Antonio Brown, Kelly Winslow, Raymond Berry, and Ozzie Newsome. Now, I know I think uh, Raymond Berry is more receiver than tight end, but I kind of put him in tight end position here because I think his body type's a little bit more like that. Uh, Kelly Winslow was a, a focal point to Chargers uh, 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 offense. Uh, under with Dan Fouts leading that uh, Ozzie Newsome was the cornerstone. The Browns, he's always missing reliable. Antonio Brown is actually a very well, very good receiver when he plays. Um, and Fred Blintikoff, you know, and there's a reason why there's a, a, a NCAA uh, uh, trophy named after him for receivers. So, once again, they're potent uh, receiving core. And now time for the O-line. Now, your O-line be, will have Jonathan Ogden, uh, Gary Zimmerman, Rosie Brown, Mel Hine, John Hanna, Zach Martin, Gene Upshaw, and Jim Ringo. Another quality line of individuals here. And for your D-line, this one, another potent, potent D-line. You have uh, Michael Strahan, Doug Atkins, Chris Dolman, Julius Peppers, Vaughn Miller, Warren Sapp, Ernie Stotner, Alan Page and Leo Nominelli. Now, I realize Vaughn Miller um, is probably more of a linebacker than a defensive end. But I put him here as a defensive end. But uh, you'll see my linebackers. You see a guy there. You could probably flip flop those two guys around and everyone would be happy. But, you know, you look at this Coleman. Dolman was a beast right there on the line during that, you know, 80s and 90 run. Uh, Alan Page is part of that uh, Purple People Purple People Eaters. One of the greatest names. Defensive names out there. I'm sorry. Warren Sapp, of course, that big man in the middle for both Tampa Bay and, and the Raiders. Strahan was just a phenomenal uh, 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 sacker. I mean, setting the mark. You know, I think, you know, a little controversy with that last sack, but, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> he got it, so just deal with it. Linebacking core. I mean, here you have uh, Nick uh, uh, Bucci. Uh, I'm going to butcher his name, so just, no, I'm probably just going to call him Nick, but he was a, a phenomenal uh, linebacker for the Dolphins, he had Joe Schmidt, uh, Mike Singletary, the little engine that could um, during the Bears Super Bowl run, Derek Thomas was another beast over there in Kansas City, Jack Ham, um, him and Lambert were the dynamic duo of the linebacking core for the Steel Curtain. Ted Hendricks was a key asset to the Raiders' uh, dominance during the 70s. Kevin Green, um, this guy's actually spent a couple times different teams. Better known for his uh, Rams uh, tenure, but did spend some time in Pittsburgh and also as well as Carolina. He's one of these guys that's also flip-flop between defensive end and linebacker. So uh, this one, he's in linebacker. So you get, like I said, you switch him and Vaughn Miller. And I don't think it's going to be any any uh, uh, downgrade in terms of your defense. The secondary, um, you have Mike Haynes, uh, Willie Brown, Aeneas Williams, Jalen Ramsey, Charles Woodson, Ken Houston, Troy Palomalu, he's never not working, and John Lynch. 
Once again, another uh, potent uh, uh, defense, uh, secondary. But Hay- Haynes and Brown were pretty much a dynamic uh, uh, pairing of defensive backs during that early 80s time frame. Uh, Jalen Ramsey right now is just one of these uh, dynamic defensive backs right now in the current game. So, And then off to your special teams coaching staff, uh, Morton Anderson will be your kicker. Uh, Shane Letcher is your punter. Return specialist Gail, S- Gail Sayers, that's right. He was a, actually a, a key pat, uh, a return specialist for uh, Chicago when he first started because of Brian Pittle is already, already there as the established running back. A little controversy between those two, but, uh, you know, the, the movie Brian Song, uh, which is more of a tragic story, but it'll actually highlight the uh, rivalry the two kind of generated. Friendly rivalry, mind you, they, they generated with each other in terms of uh, trying to be the starter and the injuries they both suffered during their early career. And the coaching staff, your head coach is Tom Landry. Um, you know, the legendary uh, fedora you always saw on the sidelines in Dallas. Uh, assistants will be Curly Lambeau. That's right, you know, the founder of the Packers, the namesake for their stadium, and Andy Reid. Once again, these three guys are the next three in terms of victories. So very, very potent uh, uh, coaching staff as well. Now off to the third team. And here I think that's where things time trying to get interesting. Uh the quarterback wise I have Joe Montana, Ben Roethlisberger, and Matt Ryan. Now Mont Joe Cool was just a phenomenal uh, uh you know, the field general from Bill Walsh's uh, uh offenses out there in San Francisco. Big Ben was just I think he was more of a surprise quarterback coming in the class with Eli and Phillip Rivers. But he had uh, success early because he was under great uh, coaching staffs uh, with Bill Cowler and then later Mike Tomlin. And then Matt Ryan, um, Matty Ice. He has the stats. I mean, he has a cannon for an arm. He, he has all the yards. Unfortunately, he's best known for uh, being on the field and just could not generate a winning drive in the Super Bowl. But he's still a prolific passer. I'll just see what he does now in Indianapolis. Your backfield will have the bus Jerome Bettis, uh, LaDainian Tomlinson, Earl Campbell, and Frank Gore. Uh, Tomlinson was just one of the speedy backs. Uh, Campbell was a bruiser. Unfortunately, injuries kind of cut his season short. The receiving core, uh, very potent receiving core we got here. You have Lynn Swan, uh, Lance Allworth, Marvin Harrison, uh, Peyton Manning's favorite receiver, Steve Smith Jr., uh, Isaac Bruce, Shannon Sharp, uh, John Mackey, and Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates was not, was a favorite receiver for uh, Philip Rivers for a long time. So as you see, there's a lot of uh, uh, key guys here that can make some uh, more excellent catches and also uh, downfield threats. Your O-line will consist of Willie Rolfe, Bob St. Clair, Joe Staley, Dermonte Dawson, Jim Parker, Steve Hutchinson, Steve Wisniewski, and Bulldog Turner. Now for Turner, you know, his, his given name is Clyde, is one of these uh, two-way players, so he's also uh, a very prolific linebacker as well as a center. But here again, was a center, so a very potent line right here. On the defensive side, your uh, defensive linemen were consist of Richard Dent, uh, Super Bowl twenty MVP, Howie Long, J.J. Watt, Demarcus Ware, Jack Youngblood, Randy White, John Randall, Cortez Kennedy, and Richard Seymour. Another potent defensive line. Backers will have Willie Lanier, uh, Chris Hanberger. He's actually known as the Hangman. I don't know why. He's a very uh, uh, hard hitter. Bryant Erlacher. This man would just be able to sniff out the ball anywhere it was at. And he had a motor. Uh, Derek Brooks, another one that just... With another uh, linebacker during that time frame. Bobby Bell, TJ Watt, and Les Richter. That's right. And I had the Watt brothers uh, in here. Not the other one. That's uh, more of a fullback. Um 
we won't talk about him. But TJ and JJ are just uh, two phenomenal uh, uh, animals right there in defense. And TJ really came on his own back in 2021 season when he finally won the uh, NFL Defensive Player of the Year. But he is a J- just a beast right there for the Steelers. And he's actually played a whole season. He might have broken uh, the season sack total. Your secondary consists of Rod Woodson, Jimmy Johnson, Brian Dawkins, Patrick Peterson, Daryl Rivas, Earl Thomas, Rondé Barber, and Steve Atwater. Another potent uh, secondary to try to uh, make uh, uh, contested catches. Special teams consist of kicker Adam Vinatieri and Mr. Ass- uh, assistant. Here in Spectre with the Patriots, where he won three, and then he went to Indianapolis, won another one, and stayed with, with the Colts to the end. Uh, the punters, uh, Johnny Hecker, return specialist Tim Brown. He, he was a returner in, early in his career. Your coaching staff will have head coach Chuck Knoll, assistants Bill Parcells and Marty Schottenheimer. Both Parcells and Schottenheimer were very good uh, uh Defensive, offensive minds, respectively, and Chuck Knoll, which is the mastermind before the four Super Bowl wins of the Steelers during the 70s. And the last team, the fourth team, I mean, there's still a lot of names I still want to put on here, but the fourth team consists of John Elway, sling, slinging Sammy Baugh, pretty much the, 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 the father of the modern-day quarterback, and Philip Rivers. Uh, your backfield consists of Franco Harris, John Riggins, Curtis Martin, my favorite Martian, and Lenny Moore. Uh, part of that good uh, Baltimore Colts run. Uh, Franco Harris, best known for the immaculate, re- immaculate reception. Uh, John Elway was a phenomenal quarterback, had a hard time winning the Super Bowl before finally winning back-to-back. Phillip never made it, unfortunately. He found some great teams, just never could get to that uh, promised land. Receivers and tight ends consist of Chris Carter, DeAndre Hopkins, Jimmy Graham, Mike Ditka, Megatron himself, Calvin Johnson, Don Maynard, Reggie Wayne, and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, that's right. Ditka was a great tight end for a few years before becoming a head coach and leading the Bears to the Super Bowl that way. But he also was a tight end for the Bears. Funny. Uh, Reggie Wayne was a, a compliment receiver with Marvin Harrison when he showed up. DeAndre Hopkins was a, is an excellent receiver. Um, he was a favorite target to Sean Watson during Houston, and then once he left, he became Carla Murray's favorite target. Chris Carter was just a Mr. Consistent at their Minnesota. Uh, Calvin Johnson uh, prior to had a longer career, and uh, prior to had a championship somewhere, if he was somewhere else besides Detroit. And Jimmy Graham, he's just Mr. Touchdown. Um, once you get in the end zone, he's always a favorite target, no matter which team he's on, except for Chicago. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. O-line consists of Orlando Pace, Forrest Gregg, Mike McCormick, Kevin Maui, Tom Mack, Mike Munchak, Bill Fralick, and Dwight Stevenson. Lando Pace was a, a highly touted offensive line when he came out, uh, part of the Rams' uh, greatest show on the turf, really helped protect uh, Kurt Warner. Forrest Gregg was a, a beast right there for the Packers, protecting Star. Munchak, along with Matthews, was the dynamic duo of that Oilers line for a long time. And Dwight Stevenson was pretty much the center uh, uh, for Dan Marino to kind of help. Uh, and sure protect him for his uh, stellar uh, Hall of Fame career. And the defensive line consists of Curly Culp, Claude Humphrey, Bill Hewitt, Charles Haley, Carl Eller, Buck Buchanan, Nam Kong Su, Alex Karras, and Geno Atkins. Culp and Buchanan, uh, Buchanan were a dynamic duo for those Kansas City uh, Super Bowl runs. Actually, winning one. Bill Hewitt's another one. This guy actually was a, a two-way player as well. He's also a receiver as well as a defensive end. And, um, and, and Eller was another focal point of that uh, purple people eaters as well. Actually, he was there for all the Super Bowls. 
The linebacker core, Ray Niski, Andre Tippett, Zach Thomas, Bill George, Khalil Mack, Robert Bazil, and Chuck Howley. Ninsky was uh, the rival for um, Buckus, and so they they would always battle back and forth. Kind of a friend of the rivalry almost. <clears throat> uh, Zach Thomas was another uh, quality linebacker this time frame. Bill George um, was there before uh, Buckus. Khalil Mack, um, highly talented when he got out uh, of uh, Buffalo. University of Buffalo, yeah, played for the Raiders, and we can transfer to Chicago, did well his first year, hasn't quite uh, manifested himself. We'll see what he does out there with the Chargers, but he's definitely a threat out there as a linebacker. He also lined up as defensive end. Brazil was just a, a, a good uh, linebacker for the Oilers during the 80s. And Chuck Holley, um, once again, with the doomsday defense for the Cowboys. Your secondary would consist of Richard Sherman, Herb Adderley, uh, y- Yale Larry, uh, Larry Wilson, Mel Renfro, Eric Allen, Willie Wood, and Johnny Robinson. Adderley and Wood were part of uh, the backfield to help the Packers win uh, back-to-back Super Bowls, the first two Super Bowls, and then the championships prior to that. Richard Sherman was one of those uh, key members of the Legion of Boom. They really shut down a lot of... Uh, Aerial threats. He took his talents to San Francisco before finally landing in Tampa Bay. Yeah, getting back to another Super Bowl, Eric Allen, which is another one of those quality defensive backs for the Eagles. That's just unfortunate. Those teams never really manifest anything. And special teams: uh, Gary Anderson uh, up there in the point totals for all-time kickers. I believe he's number three. Punter Sean Landetta. Uh, return specialist is Bobby Mitchell for the head coaches. Uh, of course, you know, you had to Vince Lombardi had to be on here, even though his win totals are nowhere near what a lot of other coaches are, but he just brought championships. His assistants were, are Mike Tomlin. I mean, this guy's yet to have a losing season and his defenses are just phenomenal. Uh, creating Blitzburg instead of the steel curtain. Um, this is Blitzburg. And Bill Walsh, I mean, he just uh, generated the, the offensive-minded head coaches. He was the, the father of, of the current uh, modern-day uh, NFL offenses that really kind of st- st- uh, came from his his mind. Kind of helped generate that West Coast style that's pretty much dominant everywhere now in the NFL. But there, there it is. Those are the... Uh, Four teams. There's just so many players that I want to add on here, and just so many uh, legends out there floating out there between uh, all the time for the decade. So it's really hard to really pinpoint the top uh, players I really want to uh, concentrate on and highlight, as you notice throughout the, this uh, series of trying to pinpoint, you know, some of the best quarterbacks, uh, running backs, receivers. I mean, it's just so many has graced the field and have done amazing things. And it was a hard, hard journey. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. Um, like with any list, is, uh, is this list completely perfect? By all means, it is not. Um, like I said, I, I left a lot of quality players out on the country room floor and I really, you know, didn't want to. And it was kind of hard trying to see where to really put players to really uh, concentrate more on stats. Do I look at, okay, Pro Bowls and, and, and all pro selections? Do I look at uh, championships? I mean, it was just really hard to really kind of meld these teams down into this and took me forever. And even as I was creating these pictures, I was still editing these teams. <laughs> Just let you know how difficult a decision this was, and, and just fact that I was pulling players even from the the, the next fifty the cutting room floor into these teams, and not only top fifty teams. Just let you know how fluid these teams can be. I let you know how talented even the ones I left off my top fifty could even be in there and kind of flip flop around because you look at the gen uh, uh, generations and evolution of the game. It's hard to really kind of pinpoint. That's why most of these uh, these teams are more of the modern day players. You'll see some of the early days, like uh, you know Jim Thorpe. You know the the uh, the Renaissance man for the NFL, and he also that you know 
track and basketball. I mean, the man did everything. And so it's hard to really kind of pinpoint some of those guys at that time frame. Could they really be, you know, that good now? So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be working on, uh, I'm still trying to determine if I'm going to be to uh, NHL, Major League Baseball next, and how I kind of do that. Definitely going to do a uh, top 100 overall for those guys. It may generate, you know, a top NHL team as well. Um, I think NHL will break it down probably about three or four videos. Uh, so you do like goldies, defensive men, and then the forwards. Uh, baseball, probably I'm doing pitchers and hitters. Uh, still kind of working on, on those uh, ideas, how to kind of create that one, kind of create a team based off that as well, probably a couple teams as well. Pretty much like I did with the uh, NFL baseball part, and being like a two, three, maybe four videos at the most. Hockey, I'm looking at probably at least four videos for that at least. Um, then part generate one for uh, basketball. I already got the, you know, the, my 75th anniversary team out there, so I might generate a, my my dream teams. If I utilize that uh, from uh, the, the Olympic time frame when, you know, that dream team went in and just dominated with Jordan, Bird, and Magic all on the same team. I mean, good grief. And that which is a dominating team. But, uh, those are out there. I saw a lot of other videos out there. I still have an NHL recap coming up, uh, NHL preview for the playoffs, uh, NBA playoff uh, after the first round. I still have an NFL re- draft recap and those surprises that happened, especially the first day. And I still have two more days to go. Um, so I'm sure more surprises are going to come with that. So next week is going to be a lot of busy, busy videos. I'll be generating those as quickly as possible, so you probably won't see another uh, greatest teams for a little bit until I catch up with everything else. So, hey, just let me know down below what you think of these teams. Um, who should I really uh, put up there? I uh, had some of these guys. I get it, you know, you know Johnny Unitas, Bart Starr. Some of the guys I can think of as well that could have been put up there, uh, especially some of the other modern guys, like I said, Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, uh, Matthew Stafford. So I get all that one. Um but who's your best team? Leave, leave your com- uh, leave your uh, teams down in the comments below. Where are you there? You can, once again, you hit that thumbs up. You can also share with your friends or family. Really uh, helps promote the channel out. And once you subscribe, make sure you hit that bell notification. Let you know next time we post a video. And I will see you next time on Chat Sports Talk.